morning. I'm Pastor Michelle. Pastor Laura and I would like to welcome you to Renton United Methodist Church. Today we will continue our month-long stewardship campaign, remembering that there are many gifts that we share with each other in our church and in our community. Jesus invites us to give to the emperor that which is the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When we serve God and follow Jesus, we give back to God the things that are God's. God has blessed us with many gifts and talents. We serve God whenever we share our gifts and talents with our neighbors. This morning we will ask, what gifts do we bring? What gifts do we share with our church and with our neighbors? I invite you to take a moment now to center yourself as we prepare for worship. Please join me in our hymn of praise. Good morning. This is Lizzie Watkins, and I'm coming to you from the northwest corner of Arkansas, Springdale, Arkansas, and I will be your liturgist for today. Please join me in the opening prayer. Creator God, we know that everything in this world belongs to you. In this time of worship, remind us of the preciousness of all you have made. Help us to recommit ourselves to caring for your creation as you would care for it yourself. Amen. Now join me in the passing of peace. As Jesus welcomed everyone, let us be Christ to each other. I invite you to exchange the signs of peace with those who are near you. You may also use the chat function on Facebook to greet your siblings in Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Here's the first reading for today. It comes from Exodus 33, 12 through 23. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so I, that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct I and your people from every people on the face of the earth. 
the Lord said to Moses, I will do ev the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. And Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before your name, the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall find, stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you on a, in a cleft on the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And then I will take away my hand, and you will see my back, but my face shall not be seen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, children. Thank you so much for joining me for Children's Time today. I'm glad you're here with us in worship. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that story that we just heard, where we heard about Moses getting to see God. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty special. I've never gotten to see God with my own eyes, but I think that story about Moses is pretty amazing. How God said, you know, Moses, you can just wait right here in this rock and I'll walk past and you can see me as I walk past. It made me think about what are some of the ways that we can see God around us? And I think that sometimes we can see God in each other. I can see the way that God's image is shining through you. And I thought, you know, I wonder if there's something around me that I could think about. And I thought about this pen. This is one of my favorite pens. It has a turning uh, end here so I can turn it and that's how I can make it so that it can write. But also it has a frog on it. It has a bright blue frog on it. And that bright blue frog has a button on his back. And if I push that button, watch what happens. Can you hear that? He's saying ribbit, 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 ribbit. And you know what else happens? There's light that comes out of that little frog's mouth. That is pretty special. I think that that is one of the ways that I can remember that inside each one of us, God's light is shining out and we can see a little glimmer of what God is all about if we look carefully at each other and we look for God's image in each other. And so I hope that you have some little flashlight or some little uh, thing at home that will shine or at least that you can look in the mirror and you can say, you know what, God, I see the way that your image is shining through me and I want to make that as bright as I can. Let's pray together, children. Dear God, thank you so much for the many ways that you show us evidence of your presence in our lives and in each other's lives. Help us to shine as brightly as we can with the light that you have given us. Amen. Thanks for joining me, children. Hope you have a great time in Sunday school.
This is our gospel lesson for today. It is taken from Matthew 22, 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians and saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a Daenerys. And then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? And they answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And when they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Did you hear? Amazon Prime Day happened this past week. Other retailers joined them in having Black Friday-like sales, too. We're still in the middle of October, and yet we are being reminded that the holidays are coming, and we're being encouraged to start buying gifts for our loved ones already. I love presents. I love the holidays. But sometimes I think that we forget that the best gifts that we can give to others are not something that we buy. The best gifts that we can give to others is when we share our time and talents with them. There's a parable about long spoons attributed to Rabbi Haim. A righteous person was allowed a short visit with God. She asked God, what is the difference between heaven and hell? And God offered to show her. So God took her into a large room with a banquet table. Many people were sitting around the table and it was filled with every good food that she could possibly imagine. But everyone at the table looked emaciated, and they groaned in agony. She asked God, if they're hungry, why don't they just eat the food prepared for them? And God replied, they can't feed themselves. They have very long spoons with which to eat. So no matter how much each person is trying, they can't get the food into their mouth. The woman shook her head sadly and said, truly, this is hell. God then took her to a room across the hall, and everything looked the same as the previous room. Only in this room, the people were joyful and happy and well-fed. The woman asked, how is it possible that the people at this table are so well-fed when they, too, must also use long spoons to eat? Behold, said God. The woman looked more closely, and she noticed that each person was feeding another. The woman exclaimed, truly, this is heaven, and God agreed. As you can see, the difference between hell and heaven is a matter of kindness, cooperation, and being willing to serve your neighbor. We don't need to buy gifts from Amazon or other stores to share our best gifts with each other. We each have gifts and talents that God has blessed us with, and we are invited to share that with our neighbor. This month, during our stewardship campaign, we've asked a few people to share with us how they're using their gifts and talents with our church and within the greater community. We heard from Pastor Kathy that she and Steve share their financial gifts with our church through tithing, and she invited us to consider doing the same. Last week, Bill showed us how he has been using his gifts and talents with our church and the community by helping us make this service each week as well as making and sending of DVDs of our service to those who request them. Later this morning, we will see how North Campus has been sharing the gifts and produce of their Jerusalem garden with their neighbors. When we engage in stewardship and share our gifts with our neighbors, we are serving God and following Jesus. Last week we asked, in whom do we trust? The Israelites were wandering in the wilderness, and they had to make a decision if they would trust God or the world. This week in our gospel lesson, we ask, whom do we serve? Do we serve God or the world? Our text begins with the declaration that the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So, 
They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach in the way of God and in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? They used such high praises for Jesus as they led up to their question that Jesus knew he was very aware this was a trap. But this was not really a question about money, nor was it a question about church versus state. It was a question about who they served, God or the world. So Jesus asked to see a coin. They brought him a denarius. He then asked whose face was on the coin. They replied, the emperor's. And then Jesus delivered this very memorable line. Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. This was unexpected. The Pharisees did not like the Roman occupation, and they were opposed to paying a head tax for every person over the age of 20. They were also opposed to using Roman coins for the tax because each coin bore an image of the emperor as well as an inscription which read, Tiberius Caesar, son of the deified Augustus, Augustus. They believed that the coins were blasphemous because the image of Caesar was on the coin, and Caesar deified himself. He and the other Romans considered the emperor to be a god. And remember from last week, you shall have no other gods before me, and you shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in the heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. The Pharisees remembered, and they believed that it was idolatrous to use this coinage. Jesus' response was very unsatisfactory to them. The other group, which the Pharisees so so thoughtfully brought with them to Jesus, was the Herodians. Now, the Herodians favored the Roman tax because they were Jewish supporters of Herod Antipas, who was the puppet ruler in Jerusalem on behalf of Caesar. Their purpose was to forestall the revolutionary tendencies of the Jewish people. They did not like Jesus because they saw in him revolutionary tendencies that could force their man out of power. The Pharisees and the Herodians were diametrically opposed politically. The the Pharisees wanted the Romans out, whereas the Herodians liked the Romans and wanted them to stay because the Romans gave them power and control. Both groups disagreed with each other about the tax, but they were united in their opposition of Jesus. The Pharisees asked their question carefully because they believed that whichever way Jesus would answer, it would certainly offend one group or the other, maybe both. But when Jesus said that they should give Caesar those things that belonged to Caesar, which included the coin, because technically Caesar owned all of the coins, the people were just allowed to use them, and then return to God that which was God's, they didn't know how to respond to him. Jesus rejected the position of the Pharisees without accepting the position of the Herodians. They were outwitted. Which brings us back to the question, Whom do we serve? Do we serve God or the world? We often find ourselves struggling with this question because we have created a dichotomy between the sacred and the profane, between heaven and earth, between God and country. What belongs to Caesar in our world today and what belongs to God? And how do we make that distinction? Let us reflect first on what belongs to God. I am so thankful for this congregation because I am able to see in you the many gifts that belong to God. There are so many gifts and talents reflected in our congregation, which are then returned to God through service to our neighbors. There are people in our church who volunteer at the food bank or with REACH or with the community meal plan. There are people in our congregation who take on leadership positions within our church or who volunteer to work on a team or who volunteer to work with other groups in the the community. People caring for their families and their neighbors and strangers are all ways that we give back to God and give to God that which is God's. There are so many ways that people in our congregation share their gifts that I can't fully list them all. When we share our gifts with our neighbors, we are serving God and we are returning to God that which is God's. 
When we share our gifts with each other, we also experience a piece of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So what belongs to the world? Everything else. Actually, the problem is not so much that we don't render under Caesar that which is Caesar. It's that we become more engaged and focused with the world that we forget God. We can easily become distracted from God. And when we do, we are often unaware of the realities and struggles that some of our sisters and brothers may experience in life and become disengaged with them because we're so focused on our own life and our own family and our own struggles. We forget to share our gifts and talents with our neighbors. We become blind and filled, filled with pride and arrogance. We become so absorbed with our own achievements that we begin to believe the hype that we have earned all that we have, and we subscribe to what's called the prosperity gospel. But what about the poor and the marginalized and the vulnerable? They work hard too. Are they less deserving? We know that meritocracy is false. The prosperity gospel is also false. Those who are rich are not rich because they're blessed by God. That is a narrative from the world whispering to us. God blesses both the rich and the poor. The truth is that some of us have more than others due to hard work and connections and the color of our skin and our gender and a lot of luck. Luck with opportunity to get a good education or living in a time when we have such great opportunities or live, not living in a place where there's war. But sometimes we forget and we become arrogant and filled with pride because we believe that narrative that the world whispers to us, that we deserve everything that we have. Jesus tells us to return to the world that which is the world and to recognize that a false narrative whispered to us. Jesus tells us that we should not worship false idols that we find in the world and invites us to return to God, all that is God's, and to share our gifts and serve our neighbors. The best gift that we can give to others is sharing of our time and talents with them. When we engage in stewardship and share our gifts with our neighbors, we are serving God and following Jesus. When we engage in stewardship, we are giving back to God that which is God's. We still have a few weeks left in our stewardship campaign. What gifts are you sharing with the church and with the greater community? And as you share your gifts, remember the parable of the long spoons and the difference between heaven and hell. In the room where the people were feeding each other, the woman said, truly, this is heaven, and God agreed. As you can see, God said, the difference between hell and heaven is a matter of kindness, cooperation, and being willing to serve your neighbor. Will we create a piece of the kingdom of heaven here on earth as we serve God and feed our neighbors? This week, I invite you to reflect, whom do you serve? Are you giving back to God all that is God's? What gifts do you bring? We don't need Amazon or any of those stores to find the perfect gift. When we share our time and talents and all of the rest of our gifts, we experience a part of heaven here on earth. Thanks be to God. Amen. join together in an attitude of prayer. Holy One, we come before you this morning in gratitude. We're so thankful that we can worship together this morning. We're also thankful for the gift of our children who bring us joy and laughter. 
And we're thankful for the beauty of this autumn season and the trees that are changing color. We're thankful for the clear air, that there is less smoke and fewer fires near us. We're thankful for the many hands that went into the opening of the new clinic in the former Sunset Library this week. And we're thankful for the many hands that are at work in the Renton Ecumenical Association of Churches, especially in the gala celebration that they had this week. And we're thankful for our partners in ministry at communities and schools. God, we also come before you this morning needing your guidance and your wisdom. We ask for your help in the discernment and the deliberations that are happening around our North Campus and the sale that is pending there. In addition, we ask for your help in understanding how we can respond appropriately to the growing crisis around homelessness, those who are living unsheltered and out of doors. Also, we ask for your assistance in learning how we can help to provide health care to all of those who are ill. And as well, we ask for your guidance in our response to the climate and the many issues that are facing us as a global community regarding our planet and the ways that it's crying out for justice. And God, we come before you this morning needing healing. We ask for your healing for all those who are suffering with COVID, as well as all those who are suffering with cancer and those who have been diagnosed with heart conditions. We ask for your healing as well for all those who are facing isolation, who are finding themselves lonely during this time of social separation. We ask for those who are feeling divided because of the political system, that you would help to heal that system. And we ask that your presence would be made known among all those who are facing a loss of loved ones or property, loss of homes due to fires, especially those in Colorado, in California, and those in Tanzania and Kenya near Mount Kilimanjaro, where fires are running rampant. And we ask as well for your assistance with those who lost power this week due to storms in our own area. And we pray at this time as well for comfort, for safety, for those who are grieving at this time, who have lost loved ones. God, we pray for all of these things, as well as the many petitions that are on our hearts that we pray now, either silently or aloud. And we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we come now to the moment in our service that we call our offering moment. We want to thank you again for the many, many ways that you are giving and sharing with your neighbors during this time. Our stewardship moments during this month are focusing on ways that members of our congregation are giving during this time and throughout our faith lives, giving of their time and their talents and their gifts. We want to thank you, especially if you have been able to give financially to your church over the last several months. If this week is a time that you would like to give financially to your church, you can do so two ways. One is through our website, rentonumc.org. The other way is through the safe, secure mailing address that appears on your screen at this time. We remind you every week that the church is open even though the building is closed, and there are so many ways that our church is giving to the community. So thank you for your generosity. 
with the help of our friend Sandy, we planted this garden in the spring with potatoes and Onion. onions and cucumbers and other things. And we came today to harvest the potatoes and discovered that they had already been harvested. We're not sure by whom, but we hope that they went to good use to somebody who could enjoy them. This is the Jerusalem Cross Garden, and it was planted with both vegetables and flowers and regularly watered by D. And these uh, scarlet runner beans are great for birds and other pollinators. And in the front you can see chard, which is ready to be harvested, as well as tomatoes, which are showing the signs of fall, but some may still ripen, and the green ones can be used to make pickles. We got these out of our garden. They didn't grow very big. The chard is done really well this year. I picked it a couple times and we enjoyed it a lot. It's very good. I don't know. Am I supposed to be pulling this out? Mostly I look for the nice green ones. They haven't been on the plant too long. Okay, in this corner we have um, a holy moly pepper, which I guess is appropriate to have in a Jerusalem garden at a church. And then my Ethiopian friend walked by and I asked her if they ate hot stuff. Oh, she said, we love it. The hotter, the better. I said, take all those peppers. <laughs> Let us hear the benediction. Put your faith into practice. Live love and share in the hope that Jesus Christ brings. Always remember that God loves you and has chosen you to be God's own. Go in peace with God's blessing. Amen. <laughs>